Research Councils UK have always been interested in programme of research that benefits both countries, that delivers impact, i.e. changes lives. In this day and age, in this globalised world, our research and innovation is becoming increasingly internationalised. There have been a series of initiatives in India that have had research and innovation at their heart. This project sets out to develop improved rice varieties for production of rice in India. Uh, rice varieties that will grow better under flooding conditions or under drought conditions, which we can expect with climate change. The project is already having impact in, in three different areas. One is with rain-fed rice farmers. The second is with scientists in India and training them to be able to use modern molecular methods for rapid improvement of rice varieties. And the third is with policymakers and developing models that predict climate change and the impact of climate change. Well, this project is nuclear thermohydraulics, essentially trying to understand how we can design safer nuclear reactors. For example, had that been the case at Fukushima, its lack of off-site electrical power wouldn't have mattered so much. Well, the policy change that these projects and projects like this will allow is that an ability to design safer and cheaper nuclear reactors will help facilitate the, the government's quite sensible, in my view, desire to use more nuclear power to generate low carbon electricity. The project that I've got is a UK-India project delivering energy services to a range of rural communities, mostly in off-grid settings. In India, our plans are to install some energy technologies in a rural village setting in the northeast of India, in the state of Assam, and work with the community to see how those energy services impact on their lives. I would pretty much say that today, science and technology is one of the important strategic pillars of the Indo-UK overall relationship. And I think RC-UK-India relationship or collaboration has played a seminal role in, in, in building that. This was an Indo-UK energy initiative which started in 2010 and it is kind of a very vibrant kind of a joint venture where we are looking for the development of the exothermic solar cells, advancing the efficiency and production potential. The project was having three distinct objectives that we were going about. One was a scientific objective where we were trying to target the novel material developments and then to also find out the basic cause where the efficiency of these cells were limited. And number three was also to find the production advantage and all these estimation and modeling. It is going to impact not only the urban people, but very remote and uh, rural people also. This is leading towards the actual use of electricity in a cost-effective and efficient manner. This is a project called the Aroke project. It allows for interaction among a wide range of scholars from different disciplines. And one project proposal that has come to fruition is with the University of Edinburgh for us to study uh, medical biotechnology in India. This will be the first such social science project in medical biotechnology as far as I know. So the Hydroflux India project um, looks at the impact of climate change and land use changes on water resources of the Ganges Basin in northern India. The project will have an impact in the sense that uh, the data and the projections that we are currently generating are very relevant for uh, policy makers at various levels. Because of RCUK we have uh, managed to do things which would not have been possible. It is not a coincidence that the activities of DBT and uh, UK have ramped up uh, after the establishment of RCUK. This is the first stage. What we want is a strategic, sustainable relationship, partnership with India on research and innovation that signifies a long-term commitment between the UK and India and will together address some of the big challenges that face India, UK and the rest of the world.